Hello everyone, welcome to another classic toy review from Scorched Earth Toys at AnyMoon.com. Today we're looking at one of the longest running lines of all Macross or Robotech toys, Toynami's series of 1-100 scale VF1 toys. These toys debuted in July 2006 and are still in production in 2020. If you would like to secure your pre-order of the newest releases or shop a great selection of other toys, you can do that at Big Bad Toy Store while supporting this channel by clicking the link in the comments below. Over more than 13 years, Toynami has mustered 35 releases. That's way too many for one video, so today we're focusing on Waves 1 and 2, which originally retailed for just $19.99 US dollars. I'll be back to look at the other releases in videos where I will pit them against their most direct competitors. Toynami began this line at San Diego Comic-Con 2006 with Hikaru's VF-1S in a black box. Though the color changes based on the VF-1, the box remained essentially the same. The artwork is cookie cutter, but there's a big window showing off the toy and a flip top lid that reveals a slew of accessories. Along with the VF-1, you get a display stand consisting of a base, an arm, an extension, a socket for adapters, and three adapters, one being for each mode, four sets of TV style missiles, four sets of Do You Remember Love style missiles, a gun, an attachment piece to connect the gun in fighter mode, a cockpit canopy, two fixed posed left hands and one gun gripping right hand, as well as three landing gear. Behind the cardboard the tray sits in, you'll also find a baggie including stickers and instructions, and you can find scans of both up on anymoon.com. The first two waves were labeled Macross products, so I'm going to call these things by their Macross names. Hopefully that won't distract too many of you Robotech purists out there. The toy came packaged in Batroid mode. We're gonna start in fighter mode so I can end on a stronger note because fighter mode is where you see the most concessions for the scale and price point. That begins with the canopy and cockpit. You'll see there's no pilot figure there. You need to swap out this canopy as part of transformation. So this isn't something that you can open up you can see there's just a flat black spot there. Sometimes these canopies have a tendency to look a little too frosted. Uh, it was particularly evident on the San Diego Comic-Con uh, exclusive release. Now mine doesn't have that problem, but many other people's did. The toy in fighter mode is problematic at best. You have an issue that causes it to fall apart, particularly as it gets a little longer in the tooth. There are joints within this toy that start cracking. That cracking happens fairly early in its life, and when they crack, the limbs are attached a lot less securely. So if I hold this toy up, and I can easily pull off the entire back of the toy, this uh, is pretty frustrating in that uh, there's nothing that attaches this entire section to the front section. And you can see there's a big crack in this leg joint here. Those same joints are in the arms and the shoulders that connect. So if I take a look on this side, you will also notice cracks there. So these are all loose joints now. And the problem is compounded by the fact that there is a slot you can see in the leg which attaches to the arm and unfortunately they put the slot too far back towards this yellow circle and because of that it pulls the arms out and away from the slots that they're in since they just peg in to the upper arm and so they can pull out and then you get less of a tight connection there and it just falls apart on you, which is obviously not very fun. So you can, you can get it to stay together, uh, and you're kind of cheating it a little bit, it feels like, and it's, it's, it's not great. So at first it might be all right, but after a little while, it starts getting loose and sloppy on you. And what's really peculiar about this is by this point in VF1 toy creation, it was already pretty well established that you should do something to connect the legs to the back plate here, which would have helped keep the legs up tight and secure even when they were loose in the, the arm area. 
or to do something with the backpack because the other issue you will note is that the backpack kind of rides up and then you get this angle upward which is no fun and it's not really sticking down in place so there's nothing keeping that tightly locked so handling this toy in fighter mode the very first time you do it not going to be an issue as you do it more and more it becomes more and more frustrating and this is where you get the fact it's a $20 toy that seems to be meant to be disposable once it starts falling apart on you spend another 20 bucks get another version this review does cover Waves 1 and Waves 2, and Waves 1 just has a smooth peg for the leg, which is exacerbating that problem I have where the whole back half of fighter mode is falling off. On Wave 2, you can see they actually did put a little nub on the leg peg, and it is a little bit longer, and that helps keep that leg attached in fighter mode. So I still have a big problem with the arms being tugged off, but I have less of a problem with the whole back of the plane coming off on Wave 2 and later Toynami 1100 VF1 toys. So handling this toy might not be terribly fun, but you do get some cool options that aren't necessarily standard with other 1100 scale VF1 toys and do make for some nice uh, display capabilities. Also, eventually Toynami did correct where that slot was positioned in the leg. It wasn't until about 2017, so most of the early releases you're going to want to avoid for not holding together well in fighter mode, but eventually they got their act together. This is the gun that comes with the toy. You can remove the handle of the gun and then make it more compact for fighter mode. And then you get this weird little piece here. It's got two plugs that go into those holes in the arm, and I'm going to push those in. And then I can take my gun and connect it on there. So a, not necessarily a, a sexy way of putting the gun on in fighter mode, but you can have that gun on in fighter mode. And you can see it sits on there nice and tight to the body. The missiles, you get two different types. Both types just plug right into the hard point. And they, I found that they stayed on pretty securely in almost every instance. So uh, that is a win on a cheap, small VF1 for sure. So we could probably adjust that and get that a little better, but there you go. You got the ability to put the gun on. You got the ability to put missiles on the hard points. Uh, so that will increase your fun factor in fighter mode. All right, you've been whooshing your toy around the room and now you want to do something with it. You can either put it on landing gear, which I'll show you in a moment, or you could put it on the included display stand. The display stand has an arm and a base. The arm just plugs right into that base. Easy peasy. Now the first releases came with a cup for this display stand that you're seeing right here that has a little hole in the bottom of it. These cups cracked very easily and should not be used. They render your display stand useless. So really it renders the whole display stand useless for anybody who's got these first releases. So wave one generally avoids. Sometimes they have these reinforced cups which seem to do a lot better job, and that's what I'm going to use to show you this display stand now. You also get an extension, which is something that would be more handy for Batroid mode, where you're going to have those legs dangling down. What we're going to do is take this cup and plug it in, right in top of that hole there. And then you have a Guardian or Garewalk mode adapter and a Batroid, Batloid adapter. We'll put those aside for now. And this just plugs right in like so. And then you take your gun and it just plops onto there, which is actually a pretty clever way of doing things because then the toy can rock in any mode. Now, there's not a ton of resistance there, so this might get sloppy. But in the meantime, it's a pretty decent display stand for fighter mode, allowing banking up, down, and any angle. It's a very light toy, so that helps. There you go, that's your first option for displaying in fighter mode. If you had your display stand cup break or just didn't want to use the display stand, you also have the option of landing gear, which are separate parts, but unlike say Bandai's High Metal or High Metal R toys, at least the doors are integrated, so that's good. We do have a plug-in part. This plug-in part is all one piece of plastic, no spinning wheels, no rubber tires, just some paint applications to look like a tire. Just plug that in like so. 
no big deal. Come to the back, rotate the doors around, and grab your landing gear and press in. It will stay in there pretty securely. You don't have to worry about picking up the toy only to have the landing gear fall off. Solid enough. It's not gonna collapse on you as you roll the toy around. If everything's plugged in correctly and the legs are lined up, you also get some clearance from the ground for the gun. So that is your second option for displaying the toy in fighter mode. At this price point, you don't expect perfection, but I did find this to be a better looking VF-1 than Toynami's larger, more expensive masterpiece collection toys, which are awful. That said, they still leave a lot to be desired. One huge pickup was the adoption of the hinged chest Yamato Pioneer that creates a sleeker form. Unfortunately, the backpack is a disaster, and uh, man, those feet are big. From above, all transformable VF-1 toys look a little wide, and this one is no different, but otherwise, it's not bad. In your hand, these toys will feel pretty insubstantial in comparison to other similarly sized VF1 toys you might own. So far in this video, I've had the hands off the whole time. Here are some fists attached in fighter mode, and you can see it's not detracting from the look terribly much. So a perfectly viable option if you are a perfect transformation stickler is to go ahead and leave those fists on. Now, if you did want to do something like the gun holding fist or the outstretched hand, uh, it might look a little silly, but you can still leave them on there in fighter mode. It's nothing stopping you from doing that. And if you use the display stand, you don't have to worry about those uh, separate parts for the landing gear. You get even closer to perfect transformation. You're just dealing with the canopy being your separate item. Now on your way to gear walk or guardian mode, and again, Wave 1 toys frequently losing limbs. Uh, wave 2 toys lose arms too, but legs in particular on Wave 1 toys. You can do the quasi-guardian gear walk mode, the VTOL mode if you will. Works just fine. If you want to see the details of transformation, do check out my separate transformation guide. Eventually you will get into guardian mode. If you're unlucky, you're going to end up like this VF1J Hikaru, which doesn't really come together very well at the top. It seems to want to constantly sag down in the back. So that would be a bummer. If you're luckier, you'll end up with something like this Miria toy, which holds together very well in this mode. I can play with it. I can handle it. It's not falling apart. The arms did fall off during transformation, but I plugged them back in once I got here. Everything's good. Shoulders are below the wings. They have movement, and there's enough movement below the shoulders for you to keep moving things if the wings do get in your way. You do have the ability to swivel at the thigh, which is good. I guess it's right above the knee, really. And then you have this foot motion, which carries all the way over from Bandai's high complete model in the day, but that really allows a good stance in this mode with that twist. And you also have ball joints at the intakes. So all of that combined is gonna make for a very poseable guardian or gear walk mode. As you go to gear walk mode, you're gonna take your gun, you're gonna extend it, you're gonna grab this piece that you had removed earlier and you're gonna put that back in like so. Now, one of the weaknesses of this design is there's nothing that locks the barrel in the forward position. So on some of these toys, this is really sloppy and that barrel wants to come back on you. Now there is a peg on the side of the grip. So you do still have the ability to stow the gun on the arm, even though that isn't the mechanism for how it stays in fighter mode. Now, once you do put this toy on a display stand in gear walk mode, things really fall apart on you because all of the weight of the toy is in front of the display stand adapter, which is just a silly peg going into the back of the toy, which there you go. So there's a peg in there. It goes onto that ball, goes on there, and then the toy just limped, hangs off the front of it. So if you wanted to do something cool, like having him coming back and he's shooting like that, and like, no, it's just never gonna happen. This thing can't support the weight. So. In this mode, the display stand really does not come through. 
One decision Toynami made with these toys that they immediately regretted was the puffy Jolly Roger on the heat shield. All subsequent reissues of the VF1S Hikaru or VF1S Roy drop the puffy Jolly Roger. They haven't reissued uh, the VF1A Hikaru or Max, but certainly they would get rid of the puffy Jolly Roger. No one seemed to like that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The VF1S head isn't very good. It's got a, like a really elongated jowl to it, which covers up the big neck, but doesn't look pretty good. The all heads are on a ball joint, which is cool. So you can cock them to the side and you can twist and you can look up and down. So all of those are good things. All of them feature uh, individually articulated lasers as well. So good things there. Now, if you get your toy and you can't move the head, rock it back and forth to free up the ball joint. Some people, when they got these toys, the ball joint was seized and they tried to twist the head and instead they broke the hinge underneath the head. So be careful with that. The VF1J head definitely better looking than the VF1S head, still individually articulated lasers. So this is the VF1J head. It's looking pretty good. The VF1A head has a little bit of a small laser to it, but otherwise good enough. Certainly all heads better than the VF1S head and feature decent articulation. So speaking of articulation, we do have these joints at the shoulders that you could see allow the arm to move back and forth. You can also see that they tend to break. Now, the good thing here is when they break, they tend to not diminish the ability to handle the toy. Now there's a ball joint at the end of that swivel that allows the arm to swivel all the way around. Then you have that hinged joint underneath so the arm can come out away. And you saw there's a twist point at the elbow and about 90 degrees of articulation at the elbow. So that in, com in combination with other joints, you can get pretty far up there. So that's decent enough. Hands, you've seen our ball joints and they don't do a whole lot. They can twist around for you. So that's good. There is no waist to speak of, but we do have ball jointed hips that can come in and out. They will run into the wings like any other VF1 toy. At that point, you can use the Gara walk joint or you can open the wing and get a further range of motion in both directions. You have the knee, you have the twist at the knee, you have the feet that we've already seen in Gara walk. So all together, these things equal a pretty well articulated toy that you can have a lot of fun with provided the joints don't keep falling off on you. Handling these toys in Batroid or Batloid mode can be pretty frustrating. The gun can fall apart, the arms can fall off. Uh, it, it's just, it takes some patience, but you can get some really decent looking poses. The display stand adapter s slides in in the back here and attaches to the hinge that the backpack folds over on. It's a little scary because in order to get that thing to really lock into place, uh, it's too tight. So you end up kind of pinching things and you're doing that to a hinge that breaks on a whole lot of other toys. I haven't had one break on one of these toys, but it seems like a really awkward place to be jamming in a display stand adapter. The good news is you can pretty much just plop it on there and not pinch it totally on, and it'll still work pretty well for you. Once it's on, you just slide that socket into the extension arm and the toy will stay on there. This is not like the Gear Walk or Guardian Mode adapter or display stand usage. The toy can handle its weight. The distribution isn't so much to the back that it's just gonna be falling forward. So you can get some nice poses. Make no mistake, these are budget toys. They were not meant to compete with something like a 160 version two toy or a oh, Yamato 148 toy. Those are very expensive in comparison. They were not what you were going against. This was your cheap, accessible toy that you could put on your shelf. You could practice custom paint schemes, that sort of thing. If you're looking for a Do You Remember Love VF1A paint scheme like these, the only way you can get them is a Wave 1. Otherwise, avoid Wave 1 entirely. The shorter leg pegs mean that you are constantly frustrated by limbs falling off. At least on the version 2 toys, you only have to deal with the arms constantly falling off. And as you pose the toy, 
they will fall off. The gun will fall apart. There are lots of things that get frustrating. But this is a cheap toy that is meant to be somewhat disposable. So that comes with the territory. It's not the best sculpt. It's definitely not the best at anything. It is a cheap toy. So keep that in mind as you pursue these. Stay above wave two, wave two or better. And check out anymoon.com for the full article. Subscribe to see my upcoming videos where I'll compare this to the other cheapy competition. And thanks for watching.